What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and you're watching our college football channel. We continue with our 2023 schedule preview and projected record series. The Miami Hurricanes are up next before we get to 2023. Let's look back at 2022. Here was the schedule from last season for Miami. Of course, Texas A&M was the big non-conference game. They came up just short in that one. Um, and then you look at who they played, of course, with the, the cross-division matchups. They had to play Florida State last year and Clemson, really the two best teams out of the Atlantic Division. There are no more divisions, though, in the ACC, so uh, you don't have to worry about who you're going to play in those cross-division matchups anymore. It's just, uh, you know, the schedule will be what it'll be. You'll have a much more balanced schedule, potentially. Uh, so before we get to 2023, or before we look at the full schedule, let's look at just the games outside of the conference first. So they'll play Miami of Ohio. They'll play Texas A&M, this time at home. And they'll play Bethune-Cookman. And then also Temple on the road. Kind of a, you don't normally see Power 5 teams go on the road to play group of five teams. But they will play on the road at Temple. So those are the, the four non-conference games. Of, of course, Texas a and is going to be a really tough one. But uh, other than that, no real challenges there in the non-conference schedule. So if you go week by week, this is how it sets up. Uh, they will open things up with Miami on September the 1st. That is a that's a Friday night game. So they will play a Friday night game to kick things off. Um, I always like, especially that first weekend, to see some of these Thursday, Friday games just to just so you can get more football on that first weekend. And uh, it gives a spotlight more to those teams that play on Thursday and Friday because a game like this probably gets buried on Saturday, but maybe a little bit more of a national audience for that one. Uh, there on the first. And then they'll play Texas A&M week two. Like I said, this time at home, uh, it's going to be tough. Texas A&M is a talented team. Both teams have talented rosters. Both teams really underperformed last year. Uh, not sure what to expect this year, but looking forward to that one. They'll play Bethune-Cookman on a Thursday night, so a quick turnaround after the Texas A&M game. Thursday night game against Bethune-Cookman. And then it's on the road at Temple on September 23rd. So that, that's their first four games, all the non-conference games, and they have their bye after playing Temple. So they get their bye week pretty early, and then you just get into that grind of the ACC schedule. No more breaks after that. They open up with Georgia Tech on October the 7th. Then it's North Carolina on October 14th on the road. They will play Clemson on the 21st. So once again, because you know if, if you had the schedules the way they were last year, I don't believe they would have played. You know, if you still had the divisions, I don't believe they would have played Clemson this year. Um, or maybe they would have. Uh, I don't know exactly how it would have went. But they will play Clemson and Florida State again this year. After Clemson, they play Virginia on the 28th. Then you go into the final month of the season, November 4th, on the road at NC State. I can tell you for sure they would not have had to play NC State, Clemson, and Florida State because you wouldn't have had to play three teams from, from teams out of the Atlantic. So this is shaping up to be a pretty tough schedule. They play Florida State on November 11th on the road, then Louisville on the 18th, and on the road at Boston College on the 24th. So they play several teams that uh, come from the Atlantic Division. I guess it's about four and four, a split there. Um, and, you know, I guess the good news is you don't have to play Pitt or Duke, two teams that are probably near the top of what would have been the Coastal Division. They do still play North Carolina, though, and they'll play them on the road. But I'm looking at that back-to-back -back right there in November. On the road at NC State, on the road at Florida State, that is really, really tough right there. That's going to be one of the tougher back-to-backs probably in the conference. But, you know, a lot of games that they can win. You know, you look at Miami of Ohio, Bethune-Cookman, Temple, Georgia Tech, uh, we'll just skip North Carolina and Clemson for a second, but Virginia, Louisville, Boston College, those are seven games that are very winnable for Miami. The other five games will be a little bit tougher, but uh, if they make some improvements this year, you could probably win some of those games as well. So this is a schedule that gives them a chance. Again, I, I don't like having to play Clemson, NC State, and Florida State. I really don't like that NC State and then Florida State on the road back-to-back, -back. Uh, but, but Texas A&M is the only real challenge in the non-conference. Uh, so overall, a schedule that that's not too bad. It's got a few bad spots in there. Uh, and again, talking about back-to-backs, they play North Carolina and Clemson back-to-back -back as well. So you'd like to see those games spread out a little bit more. The totality of this schedule, not all that bad. But where some of the games are, 
uh, it does make it a little bit more difficult here for Miami in 2022. Here were some of the projections from 2022. You see an, a 5-7 and seven record for Miami, obviously a big disappointment. Our projection had them at 8-4. and four. I, I picked them to go 11-1. and one. Yes, I, I was the crazy person that picked Miami to go to the college football playoff. I thought there would be a surprise team last year. But just think, imagine if someone had picked TCU to go to the playoff in the preseason. You probably would have thought that pick was crazy. So I took a chance, obviously missed on the Hurricanes. Um, you know, looking back, there were a lot of reasons why I can look back and say, yeah, you know, there, there were a lot of reasons why Miami should have been pretty good last year. Uh, you look at the way Tyler Van Dyke played the year before, the new coaching staff, um, talent on the roster, but obviously just, it just didn't happen, and they had a very disappointing season. The FBI had them an 8.5 and 3.8. The over-under was at 8.5, so our projection was actually uh, fairly or not close really, but closer than some of the other numbers here for Miami uh, where it had them at 8-4. and four. We'll see what it is for 2023. Again, here is the schedule, and uh, this is the scale that we'll be using. So if it's a 50-50 game, a game uh, that's a game where I think the spread will be less than a touchdown. Under 20, over 80, those are games where I think the spread will be 20 or more. 20-29, to 71-80, to 80, those are games where I think the spread will be double digits, 10-19. to 19. 30 to 39, 61 to 70. Those are games where I think the spread will be about a touchdown. Six, seven, eight points, kind of in that range. So we'll start with the easier games, the easy wins. Miami of Ohio, Bethune Cookman. I think both of those are pretty much guaranteed wins for Miami. No reason to expect either one of those games to be all that close. They should be favored by 20 or more in both of those matchups. And you know, Temple is one that it's kind of on the on the border there. Should they be in the blue? Should they be in the green? It is a road game. Um, you know, it's very early in the offseason. I haven't done a ton of research on the group of five teams, so I don't know at this point what to really expect from Temple. But just the fact that that is a road game, um, and it really doesn't matter for the projection because the blue and green games are all counted as wins. So if you want to put that in the green, that is fine. Uh, again, it will not change the projection. And there were some games here for Miami. This is one of the tougher teams that I've had to do because there were a lot of a lot of games that I, I felt like could really be in in one of two different categories, and you know ultimately had to make that decision. But we'll go now to the games where I think they'll be favored uh, by about a touchdown: Georgia Tech, Virginia, Boston College. Uh, I think they'll be favored in these games by at least ten. Uh, Virginia is they're really in rebuild mode right now. Georgia Tech played. You know, they had some momentum last year, but it's a home game for Miami. I feel like they'll be favored by 10 or 11 in that one. Boston College on the road, they're kind of in rebuild mode as well. So I do think Miami will be favored by a couple of touchdowns against Virginia and Boston College and by at least 10 against Georgia Tech. Um, so th those, I think, are pretty clear-cut as far as the category. Uh, I considered Louisville here because it's a home game, but, you know, you look at where the teams finished last year. Louisville did finish above Miami. So that one was close for me, but uh, these three games, I do I feel confident that Miami will be favored. So if they win the games where they're uh, kind of a clear favorite in them, that would get them back to a bowl game. That would get them to six wins, regardless of what happens in the other games. The other six games, I think, are going to be the toughest on the schedule, obviously. So we go now to the games where I think they'll be underdogs. That's North Carolina on the road, Clemson, NC State, and Florida State. Also, both of those on the road, back-to-back, -back, obviously going to be tough. Uh, yeah, I think Miami will be a touchdown underdog in all of these games. Maybe more against Clemson, but it is a, it is at home. Uh, if, if Florida State was not a rivalry game, like if I was just comparing those teams and, and where they're expected to be this year, that one would probably be in the orange. I would probably have Miami as a, a double-digit underdog in that game, but it is a rivalry game. You never know. Uh, playing on the road, though, it'll be tough, and I think they'll probably be an eight- or nine-point underdog in that one. NC State going to be tough on the road, probably about a six or seven point underdog in that game. Clemson's probably eight or nine. North Carolina's probably six or seven. Uh, so I do think they will be about a touchdown underdog in all four of these games. Now, if they play the way they played last year and you see no improvement for Miami, then probably all four of these games would wind up in the orange. Uh, they will be double digit underdogs. But, you know, you expect at least some improvement for Miami this year uh, in year two under Mario Cristobal. And that's kind of where I'm I'm putting them not a top 25 team, but one of those teams that's maybe not too far away from being in the top 25. And again, these four games, I think they'll they'll be clear underdogs, but not huge underdogs. And then that will leave Texas A&M and Louisville. So these are your 50-50 games. 
you know, I was close to putting Texas A&M in the, in the yellow. I was close to putting Louisville in the purple. So these were, were tough for me. But at the end of the day, uh, I, I'm just going to call these 50-50 games. The uh, Texas A&M game was close last year. Miami had opportunities in that game. This year it's at home. Um, I really think Texas A&M is in a better position to take a step forward this year and be potentially a top 15 type team. I think they have more potential than Miami just because of the talent on the roster. But both teams you know, missed out on bowl games last year, so there's no real reason to say that, that Miami is going to be a, a big underdog in this game. So we're going to call that a 50-50 game. Louisville, you know, I actually think Miami might be a little bit better than Louisville this year. Uh, they're playing at home, but again, you look at the way they finished last year, uh, it, it's hard for me to put that game in the purple because of that. So we're going to call those 50-50 games, and then we're going to average all of this out. So what, what we do here is um, we, won't, we won't have any automatic losses, but the blue and the green games will be counted as wins. 35% is what I use for the yellow games, 65% for the purple, and 50% for the white. So we average all of that out with those games, and you get a projection of 7-5. and five. So 7-5 and five, uh, is what it comes out to be here for Miami. Again, 8-4 and four was that projection last year. So it is down from that. You know, if you split Texas A&M and Louisville, um, and then you lose three out of four of those games in the yellow, that gets you to four losses, and then you lose one of the games in the purple. You know, you could easily see a 7-5 and five season for Miami. And given how they were, how they finished last year, you know, 7-5 and five wouldn't be that bad with this schedule. So I think that's a, a very fair projection for the Hurricanes, and that's what our formula gives us a 7-5 and five projection for Miami in 2023.